It's time now for Mental Health Matters with your host, Lisa Reimer. Mental Health Matters is graciously underwritten by New Vision Eye Center, world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast. New Horizons thanks Dr. Paul Minotti, Dr. Stephen Tate, Dr. Robert Reinauer, and Dr. David O'Brien. Now, here's Lisa Reimer. Mental Health Matters. Yes, emotional well-being is vitally important, but it's more than that. Mental health issues can affect someone's physical health, their behavior, and even dictate the course of their whole life. Hi, my name is Lisa Reimer, and I'm the host of Mental Health Matters, and I'm a communications officer at New Horizons of the Treasure Coast and Okeechobee. And for those of you who don't know about New Horizons, we're the most comprehensive mental health and substance recovery agency on in this region. We have nine offices across four counties, Indian River, Martin, St. Lucie, and Okeechobee. And we have a main campus in Fort Pierce, 33 acres, and we house 100 inpatient beds where we also have emergency services. And, and we've talked about this before, our mobile crisis team. So today's mental health matter is suicide support. And here to talk about it is, one, uh, our, our um, Anne Letirzo, a licensed mental health counselor at New Horizons, and she's the program manager for emergency services and the mobile crisis team. And also joining us is Christine Hughes, who is a realtor Hi. in Vero Beach. <laughs> I am. And you survived your husband's suicide. Su that's mm -hmm. correct. Um, I lost my husband, it'll be five years in March, to suicide. No note, no explanation. Um, so this is very dear to my heart, what you're talking about. Um, the bottom line is I think lately we've all learned it all starts up here, and that's mental health. So if you can sort of stabilize this and get the good positive thoughts, you can stabilize a lot in your life. Um, and I know you've invited me here, and I really appreciate that, um, because I came to a point after all this time where I just felt there was really a huge void for people that were looking for help, um, survivors of suicide. Um, they didn't know where to turn. They didn't know where to talk to. Um, they were afraid to talk to other people. Um, they didn't know where to go. So I just decided one day I would just start a get-together where people could come to what I wanted to create as a comfortable forum to talk and open up that would be confidential. Um, I would try to invite guest speakers that I knew and things that perhaps I've tried over the years that were helpful to me. Um, and I know I mentioned to you earlier, um, I'm in real estate, so to me it's like advertising. It's not just one thing that helps you, it's a whole village. So, and you show, sort of have to try different things and pick and choose and, and just keep moving forward. Um, and, and go from there and try to just feel more positive. But it's really become a passion of mine. Um, I feel really happy to do it. And so you have a support group I now. have a, a and, support group. And when is it? It's I'm having it every second Thursday at 6 o'clock, um, just once a month. I'm sort of just getting the word out casually just through Facebook and really through my colleagues and friends and people I know. And you'd be amazed the trickle-down effect because I've always been worried, sort of like you mentioned, rock, she's a rock star, which I'm sure she is. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a rock concert. You worry is anybody going to come, um, you know? Right. I want to get a speaker. I want somebody to talk for, you know, a few minutes, I, several people to help. And I wonder, oh, is anyone going to come? But Where is it? Uh, I've been holding it at Joey's Seafood Shack, which oh. um, the owner, Kimmy and Joey, are really good friends of mine. I'm probably going to change up the venue a little bit just to, you know, sort of give them a break because they don't work every night. But it's been from 6 to 7.30, and I will announce that. And I've had between um, over 30 people the first two times, oh, amazingly, my. just by word of mouth. And and, uh, you know, like 25 the last time, which was sort of my little Christmas event. And I'm making it in such a way that people can stand up and talk. Um, it's a little bit noisy in there because there's seafood machines. So I have a mic. And it's amazing to me that the people are comfortable enough that after we have a speaker for a few minutes that can share perhaps something that can be helpful to um, survivors of, of suicide, which is like a huge trauma, um, then I'll ask the crowd, you know, does anybody want to get up and share anything? And and they do. And at the last um, event, 24 out of the 25 people got up and talked, oh. maybe more than one time each. And then other people can ask questions or give input. And I think it's becoming really thera therapeutic. And they're leaving, you know, on a high note, not on a low note, 
because I found when my husband passed away, I thought, well, who can I go talk to? And some places, you know, it's different for everyone. I found them very depressing and, and I would leave feeling worse than I did when I went in. And I said, there's got to be, you know, a better thing to be done, at least for me. And, you know, everybody's different. So I'm just offering this to anyone that feels it can help them. And there's a lot of good people out there that really want to come out and talk and I'm finding it even therapeutic for myself. And that wasn't the intent. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling better too. I'm like feeling good that people are, you know, going, raising their elevation, you know, after they come in, they might come in very, very shy and not knowing what to expect, but I try to give them a little agenda. So they sort of know who's here. Like Lisa's going to speak Anne's going to speak for five minutes. Each. Nothing heavy, just, you know, mm -hmm. and I tell my story and I sort of share things I've tried and they say, oh, well, maybe I'll try that, you know, and it can be, you know, going to a psychiatrist. It could be going to an acupuncturist, which I've done. It can be going for neurological treatment, you know, all different things that are sort of pieces in, of the puzzle. So I'm finding it really enlightening and I'm learning a lot as well along the way and really meeting some great people. So I'd love to hear about, you know, what you guys have to offer as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you have plenty. Okay. That's a lot of energy coming out of that girl. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Hi, Christine. Yeah, <laughs> I've got plenty. Yeah. yeah. So... Let's just back up a little bit. Sure. So I'd like to hear your story. Sure. And then some of the things that you went through sure. to get your healing it's, and what it's my you, pleasure. and then have yeah. Anne Latiers so maybe yeah. explain, you know, like why that didn't work or, I, you know, I would or why love it did to work hear her input because um, you never know. The bottom line is um, I have one child. So we had one child. He's 20, he'll be 24. And when my husband committed suicide, um, it was on a Monday. And we work together. We we're also business partners. So it's not it's sort of like a divorce. You know, you're not just losing like I didn't just lose my husband. And then my career goes on. You know, I lost my business partner. I lost my husband. I lost my best friend. I lost my son's dad, you know, and of course, then I have one child. So this would be interesting to see your take on it. So I'm immediately, you know, the mom, dad, the only provider, you know, having to answer for everything. And um, I found it has a spider effect um, the way people behave and react and you don't know who to rely on and, you know, they don't know what to do. So you really can't put blame on friends and family members and so on. But immediately I thought, well, I've got to help my son. So that's been my focus, really, because he was only 19. Mm -hmm. Was he living at home? He had amazingly just moved out. And my husband had said, oh, he's got to get his own little house. And he was working with um, me in real estate and doing really, really well. And, you know, you sort of wonder why he, you try, you know, look back and you can't speculate on why people do things like why did he need his own little house, you know, and things like that. But um, so, of course, we got rid of that and he moved back in immediately with me. But he wanted to leave and go back to college and he did. And to be honest, I think it was sort of like wanting to leave this town because people really come up to you and say a lot of stupid stuff. Mm. Um, I had a funeral one night because I felt if I didn't, I really didn't want to. Obviously, I've never had a husband die. Um, I thought if I don't, people will constantly come up to me because I'm in real estate. My husband was really well known for a long time and they would people would come up to me, you know, at TJ Maxx and say, oh, that's that realtor whose husband shot himself in the head. You know, does my son need that at 19? No. You know, God knows what he experienced and didn't tell me because he's sort of quiet. Um, so he went to Tallahassee, you know, for a while, you know, was up there and went away. So I thought, well, I've got to get everybody's like, you've got to get some kind of help to deal with this. You know, that's what people say to you. Mm -hmm. So I thought, OK, well, I've never gone to a psychiatrist. Maybe I should get a psychiatrist. Someone said maybe Were you noticing about yourself, you know, I couldn't breathe. I mean, honestly, I drive down the street a week later. I went right back to work and, you know, I couldn't breathe. I think I had anxiety because I thought, well, what do I do? What do I do? It's like, do you go lay in bed? No, that's not me. So I thought, well, I better just go back to work. And then I noticed nobody wanted to talk to me <laughs> for a little while. Obviously, you know, they don't know what to say. And. I work for a great company that was so supportive, Dale Sorensen Real Estate. Um, they told everyone to respect my privacy and not to bother me. So someone recently told me that. So maybe, you know, that was part of it, mm -hmm. not people not coming up to me. Um, but, you know, eventually, you know, everything I got going again. But I tried. For, you asked me, what was I trying? I started going to Angela King, who is, in my opinion, a guru of like acupuncture, a lot of organic things, Chinese medicine and um, neurological treatment, NET, which they call it, which is to clear like blockages. 
and she took me in immediately. A friend referred me to her, um, who's a very clairvoyant friend and goes to her for help. And she said, um, you know, this is like a hole. And a lot of people describe it as that in your heart when something like this happens and it has to be refilled. And I can't help my son if I can't help myself. So that's sort of where I started. Mm -hmm. And I was going to her like once a week um, to talk things through and why. And she gave me the first thing she gave me, which I think could be helpful to others, were um, these meditation type tapes to really calm you down because I would find when I would be in the car driving to an appointment I'd feel like I couldn't breathe so um I also had like a spray and all this stuff is helpful that you spray and it does something to to calm you down again and then because you have to be on stage you know when you're in real estate and you can't run around crying mm -hmm. you know non-stop and you have to be able to function so I've never taken, you know, medication or anything like that. And so this was all new to me. Like, what do I try to try to be strong, you know, and get through this? And I also felt rightly or wrongly, I needed to hide this from my son. Like I didn't want him to see me mm -hmm. upset because I wanted to be strong for him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think he could handle it, you know, so I didn't want to be have him to come home and see me a wreck because I had I was his only person he had left. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of where I started. So. You know, I don't know how you guys feel about that sort of thing. Um, and ultimately, I also went to a licensed psychiatrist to see what she had to say, because I'm a person that is proactive. You can probably already tell that. And I thought, I've got to do some things to get some information that I can then use for my son. Um, and people will say to me now, well, maybe you haven't really gone through your own healing process. And that may be true. And maybe part of me um, starting this venue for people you know, not consciously, but subconsciously is also helping me to help other people. It's making me feel good and, and better and, and so on. Um, because I think there's a lot of anger and a lot of shame for some people involved. And people have asked me that. Do you feel guilty? I don't feel guilty because it wasn't my decision. You know, I feel angry a lot because of how it's affected my son mm -hmm. and my life. But someone gave me a book just two days ago, and the title's sort of graphic. Um, and it came from my cousin, and it's called, uh, it's like basically Un-F Yourself, it's called. And this guy is saying, there was on chapter two, I've actually read like 20 pages. <laughs> this The author is saying, you could have had a suicide or a tra traumatic event in your life, but that doesn't dictate how you're going to move forward you're in control of that like you weren't in control i wasn't in control of my husband's choice at all and and you think it's selfish it's it could be you know who knows what the reason is but i am in control of what i'm going to do going forward yeah and you do seem like a very grounded person so you that you probably were an Thank ideal candidate i mean to yeah. handle something as big as this. We're going to take a short break okay, right great. now and then Thank we you. will come back and, and we're going to hear a little bit from Anne and we'd like to know more sure. about uh, you. your healing process and what you're doing with this Thank support Thank you, Lisa. Group. Thank you, okay, We'll be right back Thanks after again. these messages from our sponsors. Thank you. Ronald Reagan once said, life is one grand sweet song, so start the music. Hi, I'm Derek Ogden, president of Word of Mouth Computers and Electronics. We specialize in custom audio, video, and entertainment systems for homes and businesses. With our wide range of brands and services, I can guarantee we'll provide a system that fits your needs perfectly. If you're interested in starting the music in your home or office, call me. Sonos is one of my favorite products because it's so simple to use and the sound is so perfect. That's why Word of Mouth Computers and Electronics offers a price match guarantee on any Sonos product. And as an added bonus, we will deliver, install, and demonstrate the product for you in your home or office for free. If you're interested in learning more about how how to start the music at your home or office, call me, Derek, at 888-966-7228. Again, that number is 888-966-7228. And ask for me, Derek, and let's start the music. A member of the iTex trading community, your iTex dollars are welcome. Hi, I'm Cindy, the proud owner of Cindy's Cleaning Service. I consider it a privilege to be welcomed to people's homes and offices to make them shine. We do it all from ceiling fans to floors, dusting, and windows. With Cindy's Cleaning Service, you get quality cleaning and affordable rates. We are also licensed and insured. Please give us a call and we will give you a free estimate. Cindy's Cleaning Service, 569-9348. 
At Cindy's Cleaning Service, the Lord is our strength. Are you opening a used car lot, pawn shop, a restaurant that will serve beer and wine? In the state of Florida, these and many other industries require a level two live scan background check for clearance to work in your industry. A1A Fingerprints is your certified live scan source from Broward to Brevard. And if you're a medical provider, you need to be registered on the ACA web portal. A1A Fingerprints will help you navigate and comply with the law. Call 772-494-6556 or visit a1afingerprints.com. A1A Fingerprints. Prince. Blue Dolphin Pools strives to provide quality service with a well-trained staff in the field and in the office. They want you to know that your pool or spa investment means much more to them than just another account. They believe you have entrusted them with your investment and they'll do their best to see that it stays in top condition. Blue Dolphin Pool has been in business over 35 years, setting them apart from the competition. Residential or commercial, Blue Dolphin will keep you in the swim. 567-5853. Back to school means back to Christie's Fitness. Enroll in Christie's new fall fitness programs for kids. There's something for everyone. Gymnastics for preschoolers, recreational gymnastics, and team gymnastics. Dance, including jazz, ballet, hip-hop, and funk. Group and private swim lessons. The Weston Speed Academy, where kids learn speed and agility. The Kids Knockout Program, which teaches boxing basics, martial arts, mommy and me classes, and classes dedicated to homeschooled kids. It's back to Christie's Fitness, 1250 Old Dixie Highway. Visit Christie'sFitness.com. Bringing Vero's kids together for 20 years. Christie's Fitness. Hi, welcome back to Mental Health Matters. I'm Lisa Reimer. And if you're just joining us now, you can catch the first half of the show on our Facebook page where we put this video on New Horizons Mental Health. We're in the studio today with our uh, program manager for emergency services, Ann Letirzo. And Christine Hughes has joined us, who is a realtor in Vero Beach whose husband uh, uh, died by suicide five years ago. Um, just so people know how prevalent sure. this is in our country, um, this is such a surprising statistic, that suicide is the second leading cause of death, the second leading cause of death for 10-year-olds through 34-year-olds across the board. And actually, in Indian River County, the suicide rate has skyrocketed this year. Mm. You know, this isn't like we're not talking, you know, hundreds, but it has, I think, almost doubled in this year. Um, uh, and I saw something about it. It may have been at 23, where it used to be like at 13, uh, uh, 14, which is sort of an uh, average um, um, suicide rate in Indian River County. It is also one of the top 10 um, uh, causes of death across the board for all ages. So we're seeing much more, of course, uh, in our veterans and in our active duty uh, mm -hmm. military, as well as in the elderly. Mm -hmm. So um, this is something that has been a taboo for uh, traditionally, and it's time that we talk about it. And right. thank you so much, Christine, for coming on. Thanks on for and having talking us. About and it. you used a good word there, taboo. And um, that's really why I, I started my you know, group, my get togethers, we want to get rid of that taboo. You just you just nailed it. I mean, you said this is increasing. Um, you know, the rates are, are so high. And when my husband committed suicide and the policeman that came to my house when I got the call, he acted like this was so common that it was no big deal. And there were like 13, you know, he rattled off some big figure while I was sitting at my dining room table and he's delivering this news to me. Like, it's just so common. Like I should you know, it should be nothing big to him anymore. Um, I think there should be somebody else that delivers the news to the surviving family members. If an officer is so callous that he's beyond feeling any empathy towards someone and he's delivering that, that's just gut wrenching. And he threw those stats at me at that table and I couldn't tell you what he said, but I thought, okay, well, there might be, you know, like you said, 100,000, 13,000, whatever, but it's one to me right now right. at this table. That is not the person that should be coming telling and you that. And we do, um, do training with right. law enforcement as um, um, the community mental health agency for the four counties we are in. We do see it. That's so yeah, important. Uh, obviously, crisis training. Yes. And my husband committed suicide in a different county. He actually drove to Melbourne Beach. So this was someone I wouldn't know. I mean, I've lived in Vera Beach 25 years. So this is someone from that area. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell you who it was. It's all 
you know, a blur. I think you block certain things out when this happens and you don't remember. But I do remember that at the table. And I was lucky enough that my dad is a retired homicide. So he knew when I got the call, he knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He came to my house, you know, to be with me. And I was lucky to have him, frankly, because that was like, He's a calm. He knows how to handle those situations. Mm -hmm. But um, the delivery is like, oh, so whoa, we have very heavy before mm -hmm. you get to that point, of course, before yeah. the suicide occurs. We have what's called QPR. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the CPR of mental health and suicide. Mm -hmm. And will you just describe what QPR sure. is so that um, our, our I mean, this is what we're trying to teach kids in school. Mm -hmm. the just people in the community. Well, sure. So the, the, the approach being um, that it is for everyone, for the general public, for children, for adults, for grandmothers and grandfathers, because someone who's contemplating suicide um, mm -hmm. or just simply having fleeting thoughts of suicide, we're, we're, we're understanding they're interacting with people all over the place not just their family, mm -hmm. right? So you go to the store, you may have a routine at a, a, a Dunkin' Donuts every morning to have coffee. Uh, you may have breakfast at a particular diner. So it involves the contact with everyone. Mm -hmm. So the idea between behind the QPR is to, to question. Ask a couple of questions when you see um, a behavior change or when you hear a statement mm -hmm. that isn't consistent with what the person normally presents. Um, and you, then you told us during your br the break right. that your husband started talking about. Uh, um, I just felt in the last year he was older than me, but I felt perhaps he was changing a little bit. Um, you know, not as social, a little more tired. You know, of course, I'm just speculating. Right. You look back and you speculate on everything. You know, didn't want to go out as much. Um, maybe wasn't. Um, you know, lost his temper a little bit, and he's not like that at all. So it was unusual. And I, I talked to him a couple of times with love, like, you know, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Is everything all right? You know, you're a little cranky with the kids, you know, that sort of thing. But um, so, you know, everybody has bad days, but you don't think anything of it, like you said. But I want to ask Anne a question. I had a, a speaker at um, one of my gatherings who lost his twin brother to suicide, and he studied up on everything since it's happened. It was 19 years ago for him, 9 or 19, I can't remember. He said if someone tells you they're contemplating suicide, if you ask them, do you have a plan and do you really mean it, that if you bring that to light, it lowers the percentage of them actually doing it. And I'm wondering if that's true. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It is true. Mm -hmm. And and that's it's it's actually good to hear mm -hmm. that he's um, you know speaking about that sure. because um, it sort of has been reversed. People would think, um, you know, don't talk about suicide. Right. Because you you may um, encourage them, that may give them ideas. Mm -hmm. But we've learned right. through the course of research that that's not the case. OK. That you talk about mm -hmm. it and then you're kind of allowing them it's an invitation it's an opportunity you know you're extending a hand of trust to that person right, a you hand can of talk trust. about this right. with me so um mm -hmm. so qpr is question mm -hmm. persuade right. and refer so question okay. how are you no right. really how right. are you put the phone down look up from the right. screen right and okay. really talk to them and then ask them those hard questions, questions. are you thinking you of killing plan? yourself I've, do you have the means right and then if they say yes right how? you persuade them mm -hmm. to get help and then you actually stay with them and refer them uh, to to the professionals or to a hotline, mm. you know, or just nine one one, and and so we have about one minute left. Okay. So I want to okay. make sure that people know okay. where they can go. Okay, they can call me at seven seven two five three two eight eight nine four. Do not be shy. It will be the <laughs> second Thursday in January. I don't have that date in front of me. It will be six o'clock. I will tell the venue. Um, everyone is welcome. It's an open form. It's very casual. It's only an hour and a half. It's very relaxed. I I will have um, some guest speakers just for, you know, a few minutes each, and then people can share and meet other people and just basically feel they're not the only one. Mm -hmm. So there is help out there, and there are people that will be an open door and for you and really want to know how you're doing. And are there medical professionals there just in case somebody really, like, has a meltdown? Um, I Sometimes I have an, another gal that I've had there, yes, um, but no one has had that. Right. Um, I think they've been relaxed enough, okay, to be good, honest. Good. Yeah, that might it's be been positive. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> thank you, though. So thank you for coming oh, on. thank you for and having your me. your phone number one more time? 
532-8894. It's Christine Hughes. You can call or text me. I'm on Facebook under my real name, unlike many. <laughs> so you can find me there. Okay. Thanks again and for you, having me. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And if you'd like to find out more about New Horizons, we're at www.nhtcinc.org. Thank you for joining us. And thank, you. thank you, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Lisa.